Hello my beautiful people and welcome back to my channel. My name is Elizabeth Sullivan and I am coming to you today with a confession. So let's get into it. Okay, well, first of all, I want to send you greetings, greetings, greetings from a completely new place and location. Obviously, this is not my kitchen, but it's so, so cute. And I am shooting this video and probably the next four that are going to come out on this channel from Montreal, Canada, because I moved to Canada for over a month like five, six weeks. I am so excited. It is so cold and freezing outside. I did not expect it. Do not give me any of those. But even Russian, you should be used to snow. Judgmental, <laughs> judgmental bitches. No, not predispositions. Um, kind of like what you expect or what you think of something before actually figuring it out for yourself or learning it for yourself as is. And Honestly, today video, today's video is going to be about those prejudices because I am here to confess to you about something I have never talked openly just yet. And I think it's time. It's something that my conversation with my partner inspired me a few days ago. And I literally woke up in the middle of the night realizing that I have to shoot a video where I say that I am a Nepo baby. Nepo baby. So today we are going to be talking about Nepo babies. For those of you who doesn't know, for who, who do not know what Nepo baby is, Nepo baby uh, is a new term. Actually, I don't know how old or new it is, but I know it's pretty trendy right now. Right now, a lot of people use that term and it is used to describe those kids specifically in Hollywood or in entertainment industry or people who became somebody right got something out of themselves because of their influential parents well hold on a second not because and not despite apart from the fact that they became somebody they also have influential parents for example the hadiths right uh with their father being one of the richest men in i think he's from like middle east right or the candles or the Kardashians, or um, Hailey Bieber. Right now, in entertainment industry, specifically in America, the Napo baby, Napo babies are everywhere. And this term was created to describe that. But if you actually go and dig a little deeper, you'll realize that a lot of people you know in any industry would be considered Napo baby. I think even Ben Stiller, if I'm not mistaken. Ben Stiller, I think, is a Napo baby. People from gen that generation also have been coming out of pretty influential families. So I decided that it's time for me to record this video to talk to you a little bit about this prejudices and this predisposition to success, however you want to call it, and share my story and my personal um, experience and of what it feels like and what it is to be an Apple baby. So I come and I was born in Russia, in Moscow, in a very influential family, in a pretty influential family. I do not deny it whatsoever. For many, many years, I was falling into uh, the sense of guilt, the sense of um, shame, the sense of, you know, don't talk about it because nobody's going to take you seriously. And I was trying to do all the opposite so that nobody ever knows where I actually was born in. Until pretty recent, a few years ago, after working out on this issue a lot in therapy with my private coaching, with my private therapies, came to this full embodiment and engravement of my ancestry, of my family, of my roots, where I come from. So just briefly, what my story is about and how does my story reflect and can reflect or inspire some of you? Because believe me, there are a lot of videos, there is a lot of influence, a lot of talks of the opposite side of this coin, but not enough on the other side of this coin, right? You see all this video of calling out where this or that celebrity came from, calling out, you know, that Donald Trump had an influential father. Honestly, just recently I read 
this article about him going through being broke at least seven times and yet he's still one of the most influential people in the world so i come personally from a family in moscow in russia i was born there i was born in a very influential as i was saying financial and status wise family so that is engraved in me from a very early age that lifestyle that privilege of seeing the world of that viewpoint i was lucky enough to travel a lot i was lucky enough to study in well in good schools uh, to have good education but at the age of 16 and 15 was the time when I started denying it harshly. I started going into a complete opposite direction of that golden cage because not many people talk. And again, this depends on family on family basis um, as what it feels like to be born in an influential family. No matter where you're born, let's start there. No matter what family you are born, these are your roots. And as it does have its own strengths, it does have its own weaknesses, regardless of the situation. If you were born to Jesus freaking Christ, you would have your own traumas. There are no people in the world, there are no parents in the world that did not damage their kids in one way or another. And that is a way of evolution that is a part of being born or being reincarnated, if you please, on this planet, is to deal and figure out how to uh, work out the traumas that created your personality as it is true today, right? Because everything we go through during the childhood shapes up most of our personalities as we grow up. And goddamn, don't tell me out of years, years of practice, as a clinical psychologist in private practice, also talking to dons of my own supervisors who have been in the profession for over 40 years, 40 years. There is not a single human being who was not damaged by his parents. We are going to pick up some traumas that we are genetically predispositioned to as well. Because whenever it is, wherever it's something thin, it's going to break right there and then. And there are tons of stories about, okay, like I am getting off the point. Let's back, get back to my story. Let's get back to me. Let's get back to my story. So at the age of 15, um, or even 14, I don't remember, I was about to graduate school. I graduated school really early because at, from an early age, I realized that I do not want to follow. I was very rebellious. I did not want to follow whatever was pushed onto me, right? All that influence, uh, whether it came, whether it came with perks, whether it came with some not dominance privileges. It also came with a lot of weight, a lot of weight. And as a firstborn, as the older child in a um, family, you carry that weight a lot throughout your life. So it was always supposed to be number one. I was always supposed to be the best, the greatest. I would always have that weight of, you know, companies and um, I don't know, like royalty, for example. I would love to work with royalty at one time because it's so interesting of when you're born in the royal, royal family, from a very early age, you have to mentally carry that weight of being responsible for the entire country. Imagine that. Imagine how heavy it's supposed to be. It should be. It is on your psyche that from an early age, you cannot take this weight off. It doesn't work like that. It's not that somebody just put on a coat and you can take it off anytime. When you're an entrepreneur or where you come from a regular or poor family, you can choose to put on the weight of something more, more successful. But when you're born in a specific family, like a royal family, when it has its own traditions and it has its own um, ways of being and these responsibilities, these huge responsibilities for the entire the governmental structure you cannot just take it off that comes with the fact of being born so it's heavy i bet it's heavy so, so prince charles prince henry honestly guys i do not know why my camera stopped showing overall at all at all how much percentage of the battery i have I forgot, honestly, where we did end, but but I don't have much time to finish this video because the only light I rely on over here is the natural light because look how pretty it is. Let me show you. Look, it's so gorgeous. It is beautiful. What a winter wonderland, but it is freezing. Ole, we are back. 
So at the age of 16, 15, I decided that this is not going to be my life and I am not going to be sitting in this cage, a golden cage. I decided to suffer just like any teenager goes through separation with his parents, with his roots, with his family at that time, which is a normal time for um, a teenager, for a person who's developing himself to go through separation. And that means separating from your family system, right? To figure out who you are, what you are, what you want to do in life and where you're going. So at that time, I completely abandoned everything that I was set to get in life, set to go to and towards in life and start figuring out my own career. I moved out, I ran away um, from my family. I uh, remember at like probably 15-ish or 14 where I started discovering music and my entire family was so against it. My, my, my parents were not supportive whatsoever, but that probably was also one of the reasons why I decided to do it. Please don't die on me, camera. I beg you. I just charged you. So give me at least 10 minutes to finish this video. So let's hope I'm not going to do that thing from it. And I chose music, I ran away and I found the companies that I would hang out with, right? At that time, people who I started developing my own sense of family outside of my own family system because I needed to separate and figure out who I was. Again, I'm telling you my story because it can be very therapeutic for you to understand that there are so many different ways of development outside of um, uh, prejudices and judgment out of where you are coming from. I'm going to go there. I'm going to get there for you. So I ran away. I started developing my own life. I moved to London. I graduated family. That was the deal with my parents, with my, uh, with my family. The only way they were like, okay with letting me go and not really controlling me and not supporting me, not being there for me, with me was if I graduated school. So I made a deal and I graduated by the age, age of, of blah, blah, by the age of 16. So I graduated instead of 18 years old, I graduated at 16 and I moved away without looking back. I moved to London, I studied there, got accepted to a Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts by myself. I sent the auditions, uh, paid the tuition, moved there, spent a year there, performed and played on West End and then moved to New York, etc., etc. And it took me all these years, believe me, it was more than probably six years of full emotional and mental separation from my family for me to be comfortable now discussing and saying that I am a Nepo baby or I would be what is considered to be a Nepo baby at that time because I was born into a specific family. Does it mean that it that it guaranteed my success in life. 100% not, 1000% not. And maybe, yes, sure, there is a video I was watching earlier today about this girl who um, decided she's gonna be a rap star, rap singer, whatever, and uh, her her family is supporting her even though she's you know 30 plus. And there are stories of people who, without really putting much into who they are, what they are, it's clearly shown that this is not, they have not separated from their family system yet. But people like Hailey Bieber, people like Hadids, um, anybody who did have the support from their family, who did come, of course, um, from a more successful, more connected background, and they didn't have to stay in line. They didn't have to, to go through the same process that everybody else or most of the other people. It doesn't mean they didn't have their own process. And that is probably the main point of my video here is to show you and explain you that because of the family you're coming from does not mean anything. Everybody is born whether you believe in karma or you don't believe in karma, you believe in reincarnation, don't believe in re reincarnation. Wherever you are born, in any type of family, it's going to affect you. And by denying your roots, you're cutting off your own uh, limb. Okay? By denying where you're coming from, if I was sitting here saying, I never came from a successful family. I didn't know what money was when I was young. I did. Did I know how to make them? No. Did I have to figure it out for myself? Yes. Did I have to go and uh, uh, dive deep 
through addictions, through suffering, through hardships of life, to, to stand here and to know that I have found who I am, that I have accepted my roots and I was able to build on them. Yes. And that is the main difference. If you're denying where you're coming from, if you're denying uh, your upbringing, your ancestry, you will never be able to step into your full potential. You will never be able to step into your full power. Because if you're looking back at your past and you're saying it never existed, you don't have a foundation to build anything on. If you're going back and saying, okay, well, I'm going to deny everything that happened to me, you don't have a field uh, to grow. You don't. There's a great phrase that one of my supervisors like to use, and it is, in order to grow, you have to become smaller first. And what it means is that we tend to put so many uh, things on our personalities, onto us. We, like a snow, <laughs> well, because I'm looking at the snow, but like a snow cone, snow, snowman, like a snowman, like a snowman, you keep building and putting on these piles of snow on and on and on based on what society tells you, what is right, what is wrong, what your friend said, what your trauma say, what your partner say, what, what your, uh, I don't know, boss, uh, career people, anybody else say that you're supposed to be this and that, that because of your past, you're good, bad, right, wrong, poor, rich, successful, not successful, anything that you lose your core. If you put all this snow around you, it misses the person inside. It misses that core of who I am. And only from this core, you can actually expand. You can actually truly grow. You can actually truly become the version of you that you're here to be. That is why I feel comfortable right now sharing and saying that, yes, I am, I come from a successful family. Yes, I built myself up and I will stand behind the words that I have built myself up myself. I will stand and fight for them. Actually, I won't fight for them because I honestly don't care what anyone else thinks right now. But that is a part of my journey. That is a part of the things that I had to heal, that I had to go through, the traumas I had to face. Is it harder or easier than others? No, it is very hard. It's actually impossible to compare that. Haha, technology, let's see who wins now. What do you have to say? Absolutely nothing. Just because my camera died doesn't mean I don't have a new iPhone with a pro resolution camera on it. So I'm gonna shoot this video and I'm going to finish it right now with you. So yes, what I was saying is that you can say that Hudid had more opportunities than other girls, but you don't know what exactly are we comparing here. Are we comparing that they knew more people to get into the industry? Sure. Are we comparing that they had uh, less of a um, field to create and to develop their personality? No. Are we comparing that they did have more pressure on themselves uh, or or them put on them because of their bringing that let's say somebody from an average family whose parents are not very pressing right are not very demanding who knows who knows what exactly are we comparing are we comparing their upbringing are we comparing their personal skills uh, personality traits are we comparing their parental influence are we comparing their potential to grow what part of the personality of the life can we truly compare here michael jackson was born in as a, as a napa baby right would be would be considered ish because his parent was uh, his father was um, connected already in the industry so were his brothers was it an easier childhood than uh, let's say anybody else then Tony Robbins, who is the complete opposite, right? Who was born in poverty, who was born with a lot of siblings, like 17 or 18, I don't remember, a lot of kids. No, you cannot compare that. That these things cannot be compared. And I think the only way we can do it is face them at the core value, their face value, and see, okay, how about I, for myself, and this is something I want to leave you with, guys, I, for myself, find examples in reality, find examples in life that are going to uh, support my narrative, that are going to support where I come from, where I am, and where I want to be. 
because I promise you, you will find 100 examples of life that you would want to live uh, that is similar to the given things that you have. And you'll find 100 examples to be jealous of, to be judgmental of, to be upset with, all these types of things. So where exactly do you want to focus? For me personally, I remember when, you know, there was, there's a Russian word that's called zashkvar. I don't know what an English version for that would be, but it's kind of like lame-ish, right? So somebody like Paris Hilton would be at long term, long time, considered to be lame. And we have another personality in Russia. Her name is Ksenia Sobchak, who is right now one of the number one media personalities, journalists, politicians, a speaker, an influencer, and she comes, her father was a, a mayor of St. Petersburg, so she had a lot of hate, but I look at her and I don't see that, I look at her and I say, wow, because of where, despite of the fact that she came from a specific family, she built a name for herself, and that is inspiring me. Okay, and I can find a hundred people who come from a wealthy family, like Robert Kardashian. Look at the Kardashian families. Look at them, you know, even my family. For example, me and my brother, I have a brother who supposedly was brought up in the same conditions and we're very, very different. I have my own income. I have my personality. I have multiple companies. I have lived a hundred lives, you know, in various different, different subjects. I continue growing and I teach people how to grow. And then there's my brother who uh, still stays and lives with, uh, you know, our family. So it's very, very different regardless of your uh, upbringing, even within siblings, even within uh, twins. I know a lot of families who would have twins and the traumas that each of the sibling would get would differ from another. So it's always a personality choice of what you want to do with the opportunities, with the advantages that you're given. And advantages don't just mean being the Napo baby that you're born in a more influential family you can be you can take as an advantage of uh, being born in without a mother, without a father, uh, in a poor family, in uh, a family where somebody got, you know, I don't know, died, you know, passed away. And you can see that and be like, well, these are the resources I was given right now. So how am I gonna take advantage out of them? One of my good friends, she had a very opposite upbringing from me and she took strength from that. She comes from a family where they had no money whatsoever. And um, when she shares that her story with me and I share my story with her, we both can be compassionate because the things that she was suffering from that built her up and the things that I was suffering from and built me up cannot be compared, but they can be looked at and they can be appreciated and you can have the gratitude towards either of these scenarios just from looking back at them. And only by accepting it, only by saying, yes, this is my upbringing. Yes, this is where I come from. Yes, this is my family. These are my roots. Only then, once again, I want to tell you, you can get into your full potential. If you come from nowhere, you have a huge potential to grow and be like, I came from there and this is what I made out of myself. If you come from uh, an influential family, you can say, well, I don't have that jump, right? I don't have that uh, the journey to conquer like somebody else would, but I have opportunity. I have other resources right now, okay? So pay attention to that. Look back at your family, look back at your roots and say, what can I be grateful for? What can I take as uh, my personality trait builders and how I can implement it in my life right now? So that is it. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all. I'll see you in the next video. I am going to have a vlog next week because I am having an intense, exciting way, week, 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 week. And uh, I will see you then. And then there is a Valentine's Day video, which is amazing, that's coming up. So stay tuned. Bye-bye.